Good morning, I'm Mary Lou Johnson. I'm in Art Central, downtown San Luis Obispo, and I'm going to share um, this tool with you. It's called a Pilot Parallel Pen. So we're going to spend about a half hour and I'll con conclude with some resources for you. And um, also remember, if you the store is open, come in, and if you mention Code Mary, you can get a discount on the Pilot Parallel Pen. So the pens come in four sizes. So you've got these color codes um, for the sizes of the pen, and they're a broad edge fountain pen, which is pretty revolutionary. Um, they're called a pilot, a parallel pen because the tip um, is, is a metal, it's two metal plates together, and this is the tip and that's why it's called a parallel pen. And it's a fountain pen. So, just like any other fountain pen, it has cartridges. So these cartridges can be refilled, and the beauty of this is for hand lettering, it's continual. And you can get broad marks and thin marks, depending on how you use the pen. But, um, and you can mix colors, blend colors, um, these are great tools. So it comes in a box, and you have all four sizes are in stock, and it's boxed up. And the box comes with the pen, and it comes with two cartridges, and the pen is complete with the cartridge, an ink filler and the nib and the cap. And then it also comes with a pipette for cleaning. I'll show you how to do that. And it also comes with a pen cleaner. So it's a complete kit including these directions um, and, and the care for the pen. So it even has some broad edge alphabets, exemplars. Um, so a complete kit in one box for each pen, and the kit I'm seeing here has um, a red ink cartridge and a black ink cartridge. So um, these are really fun tools. Also, what I suggest is when you come in and get a pen, you grab a speedball textbook. This is the best resource for hand lettering. A beginner or advanced can come and use this book and it also comes with a set of Elegant Writer Broad Edge felt tip pins, and I brought a couple, and I'll demonstrate these too. Um, so if you get, if you grab a speedball textbook and a box pen, you're all set with ink, tools. You can clean it, you can use it. They last a long time, so um, highly recommended. So we'll go ahead, and I'm going to show you some samples. Um, I'm going to talk about the best paper. Um, we'll review some lettering styles, and then we'll talk about the parts of the pen and um, some lining guides. So hopefully I can give a good overview so that you'll have some ideas of the best use. So here are some samples. Um, this is the 2.4 millimeter size. Um, they're great for practice. Uh, this is, oops, I used the 3.8 size for this practice alphabet. Uh, this is on Arsha's text wove, and it's very good for blending color. Um, these pens are fountain pens, so if you dip in watercolor or tip the, the, the points together, you can blend colors. And you don't necessarily have to know formal calligraphy. You can make up your own with boards and sticks. I mean, this is, you can just play with this pen and you can still get some interesting alphabets with this. Um, this is um, a lettering style called Unchul. It's really good for broad edge pen. Um, it's also in the textbook. This is another alphabet that was done on Arsha's text wove. And when you use this text wove, it has some texture, so you'll get some organic 
broken edges on this, but this is a red ink cartridge dipped in walnut ink. And I'll show you how to blend colors. Um, and this is, if you follow Seb Lester, he uses Pilot Parallel Pens, and he does these crazy logo types with these pens. It's amazing to watch. Um, you can get some really good bold lettering going. Um, this is another little practice piece with a quotation from Disney. And this is a Pilot Parallel Pen. You can get the thicks and thins, you can draw, you can do um, all, all kinds of lettering styles. And this is another sample. This is the 2.4 tip and the 3.8 tip in a funky alphabet that has no rules. You just do whatever you'd like to do. And this one is a more formal italic. This is the 2.4 nib in italic and just to show you this is the 3.8 in the teal ink they had you can use these for greeting cards or whatever and this is a I found this in the 19th edition of the speedball textbook this is a font by Raymond DeBowell and it's similar to uh, Ben Sean's Gothic and it's drawn up and it's you can use the thins and the thicks and this is, I think, a wonderful alphabet. Um, I like this kind of lettering style. In fact, I used this on a book that I made of toilet paper rolls. These are, this is the coronavirus pandemic rules, 10, 10 things we all need to do, written on toilet paper rolls. And it's um, Adley Stump's um, Facebook routine. If you haven't seen it, look it up. Um, it's, it's great advice. Um, it's um, what we've all heard. Um, what's one of the first ones? Um, it's uh, the virus is deadly. It can only keep people who are vulnerable, um, and also those who are not vulnerable. Everything is one side is one thing, and the other side is the opposite. So I used the smallest nib with this. Um, the drawn up alphabet style in this with a white gel pen. And then I stitched it together with black linen thread and I bound it with leftover beads that look like evil viruses. So you can have lots of fun with, with these pens. And also for papers, um, hot press watercolor paper is the best to work with. It's it's just wonderful because these are um, fountain pens and it's a water soluble ink so it's basically watercolor in a cartridge so the watercolor paper is great. You can also use these um, marker layout pads that are translucent. They're very good for practice. Um, but if you have, if you order a paper sample um, and you have a collection of papers, it's always a good idea when you have a new tool or a new pen is to try out different sizes, um, different types of paper. So the PPP, Pilot Parallel Pen, I've tried out um, the pen on all of these different kinds of paper and the very best one is this Arches 90-pound um, um, hot press watercolor. Paper. It's really a good quality. So um, just experiment with papers, see what you like. Fabriano is great. Um, and you can uh, just do your own trial, just see what works and keep your samples together. So um, the pins come in four sizes. And we'll start with the smallest size first, and I'll demonstrate this. Um, so probably time to come around and switch. So the smallest is the 1.5 millimeter. And I'm talking about size, I mean the the actual width of this end of these metal plates. That's called a nib or the pin, and I'll talk about the pin parts 
to next, but I'll demonstrate this. So this is the smallest size, and I'm going to use italic, and italic has a recipe, and it's five nib widths high for the lowercase letters, and you letter at a 45 degree angle. Um, so this is the lettering sample for this size nib, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Constant flow. You can do your flourishes before or after you've done your word. And this is the smallest size in italic. And um, the next size up is a 2.4. This is probably equivalent to a C2 speedball nib. And um, I think I have red ink in this. And I'll just show you again for italic, there are different alphabets have different recipes for guidelines, but this is five nib widths high for the lowercase. And there's your, you can tell that this nib was a little bit wider. And so we'll just, it's the pins just flow so easily. So this is a good size to practice with. And this is um, a 2.4. That's that size. And then going up, you've got your next size, which is the green cap. And this is a 3.8. They're made in Japan, so that's why they're in millimeters. And I don't know how long they've been made. They're fairly recent on the market. I think this set is 10 years old, um, but they last forever. They're great. Um, so this is the 3.8, and again, it's five pin widths, if you stack one up on top of the other at 45 degree angle. And what are we going to do? We're going to do spring. So when you practice an alphabet, these pins give you the thick and thins that are characteristic of some of these alphabets. And the, the ink colors are beautiful. I think they're great. Um, and then the largest size, which I might suggest for beginners, either go with this um, 3.8 or the 6.0. The 6.0 is really good for practice if you're learning because it's so big. You can really get the subtleties of um, the letter shapes. And again, because this is a wider nib, you're going to have bigger proportions, so we're using italic again, and you stack your nib widths up, and that's the height of your lowercase letter, again with your pin angle at 45, and we'll do... This is great for um, black letter gothic also. So that's a quick demo on, on the different sizes, the four sizes. Um, if you get an elegant writer with your um, speedball textbook, it's um, probably equivalent to this 2.4 size. So, um, so again, this is a felt tip marker, and it's a continual Feed. Eventually, um, these will run out, and uh, they're not as permanent, but these 
are equivalent to this width and this size. So that's sort of how they write. Um, I'm going to show you some warm-up exercises that you can do with a larger pen size. And then we'll go down into um, show you what they do. So if you want to do warm-ups, go look up Andrew Fox Calligraphy. Uh, he's on Instagram. Um, I think he's on Facebook. This is just a wonderful, playful introduction to what these pins can do. Um, so here's the largest size. Here's a 6.0. And I've, I've drawn the crab and the deer and the squirrel. And this incorporates some of the letter shapes that you can practice as well um, with some of these. And, and getting used to just making some marks. Um, just getting used to how the pin works. So let's go down in size. I'll show you what these um, seam sketches look like with a smaller size. With the crab, you make a U shape. You can rotate the pin. Then you make the body. And you can just use the tip on edge to get these fine lines doesn't you don't have to be a calligrapher to enjoy what these pens can do so that's the next size down i'll do this one so you can get an idea that you can draw with these. Okay, so let's go down to the 2.4. I don't know what, oh, this is red. So you can begin to see that the edge of the nib is a little smaller and gives you a smaller scale to work with. But you can still draw. You can still get out on the points so that you can see that whatever you're trying to, to use with your lettering or your drawing, you're going to go down in scale because of the nib size. we got a viewer asking if uh, you do turtles at all in those animal shapes. Well, try one. Okay, I know we can do... Let's go back up to the bigger, bigger size. So let's do... A couple of these. Let's do this. Um, let's see if we can do. We kind of have a tail and a happy eye. I don't know. <laughs> let's make it. Their heads are more like there. There you go. There's a turtle. Um, Gosh, let's see. You can do birds. Um, you twist the paper. You can do birds. Um, and then you can also do, um, you can use the pens to do uh, pattern practice to get used to the thicks and thins that are characteristic of a broad edge nib. Um, you can do diamonds, you can do stacked diamonds. So you can do um, all sorts of practice um, strokes, which are also incorporated in your letter forms. But you can do the um, practice strokes to get used to um, working with a with thin line versus a thick line. and in hand lettering, some of the alpha, that looks like an angry turtle. <laughs> so um, those are some of the, you know, pin exercises you can do um, to make lines. You can, you can make funky letters. You can do all kinds of crazy stems, um, as I showed you in the other funky alphabets. Um, but it, they're also great for black letter. Um, this has got the sized italic or black letter. 
but it's such a strong uh, pen shape and it's easy. It's solid, it's even. Um, it's really a great, great pen to work with. So we covered that with a practice. And um, I'm going to show you the parts of the pen so that we get those covered and how to clean a nib. Wow, time is flying. So I'll show you how to clean it. Oh, quickly, I wanted to show you color blending. Yikes, I'm having too much fun here, running out of time. Um, you can blend colors with these um, by dipping into watercolor, which is This is um, Dr. Martin's Hydrus watercolor. So you can blend as well with these pens. Um, which is, you can do flourishing um, with this constant flow. It's just amazing what you can do. You can also blend by um, tapping the ends of the pins together. Oh my god. Um, let's see what this looks like. So um, let's tap these together and see what we get. I've got the yellow. That's more green. So there's several different ways you can see this um, teal getting more of the green color in. So there's color blending you can do by either tapping the nibs together to get a blend or you can dip them in a watercolor solution to blend the colors. You can use um, Dr. Martin's or you can do um, Econo Line to blend. So really versatile pens. Um, and we're almost out of time, so I'm going to, let me show you quickly how to clean. Which one? Let's do this one. Again, let's review, I think I've got a chart. Here's a chart with the parts of the pin. Here's your cap. Here's your pin unit with the nib and the neck and the ink controller, the barrel, the cleaner, the cartridge, and the pipette. So all you have to do to clean is to remove the cartridge, pull the cartridge out, oops, carefully, and get the pipette, put it in the water, put the pipette in <laughs> the grip part, Excuse me while I dive in here. And you can insert the pipette and you can pump out that ink. And eventually all of the pigment will come out of the um, ink controller and you can put in a new uh, cartridge. So. And then you'd, you'd use a paper towel. That's almost completely clean of the old pigment. And so um, that's how you would clean them. And you reinsert. This cartridge is almost empty. So at any rate, you would insert the cartridge again into the ink feeder and screw in your barrel and you're ready to go. So easy to clean. And then you can also use this between the two plates of 
the nib to make sure you get paper fibers out of that. Um, and then lastly, what I wanted to share with you is some people to look up and some things to get and some societies or um, groups to join. Look up Paul Antonio. He's one of the four crown uh, office scribes for Queen Elizabeth. He uses Pilot Parallel Pen. Jake Weedman does pointed pen. He's a pen master. Um, that's the pointed pen if you're interested in that. Um, that was my specialty. Um, this is my wedding work with pointed pen. So Jake Weedman is good for copper plate. Um, Calligraphy Masters on YouTube has endless resources for Pilot Parallel Pens. Look up Seb Lester, he does great lettering. And then get the Speedball textbook and some pens, one or two. And then I recommend joining the Society for Calligraphy. Here's their website. Um, it's, it's a society for um, promoting um, lettering arts and related uh, disciplines. It's, I joined in the early 90s conferences, um, lessons, classes, just can't say enough. And then for pointed pen, go to IAMPEF. That's the International Association of Master Penmen and Grocers and Teachers of Handwriting. And that's for pointed pen. Um, great tutorials there. So um, look up some of these artists and go to some of the websites. And uh, maybe this will help you continue in your journey of hand lettering or exploring how to hand letter. So thank you. Anything else? That's it. That's it. All right, everyone, we're done. Okay, we're out of here. Do you want to try these? Um, sure. <laughs> Sit right down.